Okay, so it's been a long time coming, I know, but here is part two of the VFX, well, my VFX tutorial and stuff, but it's going to be a bit different today. I'm going to be showing you guys um, the plugins that I use to make VFX, so there's only actually one, two, three, there's only three plugins that I mainly use, and um, to finish this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use them to make an impact effect. Which I'll do a separate breakdown on later, but I'm just showing you guys how to use the um, actual particle editors that I use. So, the first one is called um, Bezier Sequence, I think. Now this lets you change the size, well, size, squash, and transparency, and ha uh, give them graphs. So let me make a quick example real quick. So if I just duplicate all this, let me just delete everything real quick, give me a second guys. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, this texture goes in really quick, 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 quickly. But that's because the size graph looks like this. So it starts off at twenty-five, then it quickly goes to zero. Now, if I were to put it like this, just like this, drag the red dots like that, then twenty-five, zero. As you can see, it, it lingers on 25 uh, way more compared to before. And if I just do this, it just, you don't even see it when it's at full size. So that's what it does. It's really helpful for making these big flash effects. And even for shards, let me show you what I did here. So as you can see, they start off real big, then they just sprout off. What I did here is I just did something similar as the flash. Had it start off at 15, stay at that for a little bit, then quickly get on back to zero. So yeah, this is really useful for um, making size graphs look a lot cleaner. Me personally, I don't use the, the squash graph for transparency version all too much because I don't really find a use for them. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention, but envelope, this is basically the red line that I showed you, that I showed you in, in, in my previous video. Sorry. So what that means is... Okay, so you, sh you should be able to see the window now. My bad, I wasn't um, sharing the whole screen. So, as you can see, everything in this big triangle, you can uh, see it. So, yeah. Now, the next plugin is this one, which has Edit Particle. So, this is Ross Particle Editor. And what it does, it lets you view your graphs a lot easier. So, if I put this on size, you can see it. And this is very useful for making effects that are bigger than 10. Because if you guys don't know... Roblox limits the size on the size graph uh, here to 10. So if I wanted to um, make this go above 10, I can't do it. But with this with this plugin, you can. So let me show you an example real quick. As you can see, uh, hold on. It also gives you a nice layout of, wh of where your particles go. So these lines basically mean which path the particle follows. So if I put this to like 5, it's not going to go very far, but I put it 125, it spreads out more. Just gives you a nice visual uh, example of how it'll look. So if I emit, there we go. If I want to make this bigger, I can go all the way up. I, I, I don't even know the limit, but yeah, <laughs> it goes all the way up there. So this is really helpful for, for uh, making big effects. And um, yeah. They've got transparency and squash, but I don't really use these. I just use the default Roblox one since for squash and transparency, you don't really need to go over um, the default limits given by Roblox. But if you can, they're there for you. And this also has an emit function, I think. Yeah. I don't really use this one because I just don't really like how it works. You have to drag this, you can't really... Oh, you can type it in, but I prefer using this one. Looks nicer. This is the... Oh, you can like half it, I think. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Did not know about that. Oh, wait, no, this is just showing you the, um, okay, this button changes the transparency of the lines here, so that's pretty interesting. I, I, I just found that out. I, I, never, I never really messed with that. But yeah, that's it for the Ross Particle Editor. And the final one is the Emit plugin, which you can see me using in my video. So what this does is very simply just type in a value here emit then it just emits that amount of particles if you can count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 there's probably some more that i missed hold on let me just get a good view as you can see 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So it just emits a set value. And this little thing here is the delay. So, the delay. so if I put this on one second, it won't emit for one second, then boom, it'll emit. So this delay function is helpful for if you're not a scripter and, and you want to showcase big scale uh, attacks. I'll put an example on screen now. now. Uh, and yeah, that's how you can really use it. Okay, but yeah, this is just a quick video on how people can use plugins to make their particles look better. So I'm going to be breaking down my little smash effect here that I did. And I'm just showing you guys what I did with the, with the options available to make this effect look good without scripting. So... Firstly, as you can see, I have the emit value set. They're all different for each one, so it does save, which is really nice. It adds like a little attribute here, which is good for scripting. If you guys are scripters, you guys can script this into your game. I don't know the actual script for it, but I just know you can easily script the emit count. So yeah, so I'll be breaking down every single particle one by one. So the sparkles here, very simple effect. They're all very bright. So this one was just, as you can see, the uh, the the sparkles have a little uh, flash effect, if, if you guys can see, so just the transparency changes a lot. So as you can see, it's a simple size graph, just one point to one point, very linear. Uh, the transparency is all over the place. I wanted to make it look a bit chaotic, gives it that um, that type of nice flashy look for, for sparks. And squash, I didn't use squash, and um, yeah, I didn't use this because I didn't really think I needed to, but yeah. The crescent, the the big crescents are more commonly known as the wind. <laughs> um, this uses a nice little um, a size graph. Um, this is out. Like I don't know what these like these these bezier lines are really called, but it's very quick. Goes out really quickly. You can see the final result very fast. And there's some variation uh, as you can see the different sizes. For transparency, I just did a simple linear to linear, which I really, which I prefer to do for transparency graphs, because you don't really need to do <coughs> a lot for transparency graphs. It's up to you, really. But um, yeah, next is the flash, which is I think I should I I showed you guys earlier, but just a quick shows for a second, so you can see it as a player, then goes all the way down to zero. So yeah. It has a very low lifetime as well, only 0.2, uh, because this isn't going to be very visible in the effect. It just gives it more impact. The glow, it's just very simple. Similar to the crescent, it's um, very quick, goes to max size instantly. Then it slowly becomes transparent. So this, this graph is a lot less linear, because I want it to be very visible for the first few seconds, and it'll very quickly fade out. Looks pretty nice in the actual effect. So the glow crescent, are all, the, the glow crescent are also very similar except they have a lot more envelope which gives it more size variation as you guys just saw there's more tinier ones more bigger ones and uh yeah transparency is not very linear that's uh starts off very visible so you can see the glow then it slowly fades out and uh yeah the ground glow which you can see here there's no size graph because when i usually make um ground effects i don't i don't size them up or like change the sizes, I just make a set size, then go with that. So as you can see the graph, you can probably guess that the graph isn't very linear. It's, it's similar to the glow, cres glow crescent, just a little bit smoother. And the ground shatter is just, I think I did use Bezier curve for this. So as you can see here, yeah. And once again, no size graph. And for the rocks, you can see the mitt. Just ten of them go flying out. This is mainly used. Uh, this is mainly carried by the acceleration, which brings them down. As you can see, gives that nice curve. Um, for the size graph, I didn't do anything too special. You can if you want, but I don't really see the need to do that. But um, yeah, size graph goes like this. No transparency because I don't really like doing that. Oh, did I? Oopsies. <laughs> uh, for transparency, I don't really like changing the transparency on rocks because it doesn't really look too good. Squash, there's a tiny bit of squash to create variation between the rocks. Just gives them more details by themselves. And uh, yeah. Next for the shards, which are... As you can see, they start off really big. It's like an like explosion effect. So for the shards, it's very similar to the flash. It's just, it stays on the biggest size first. Then it goes out slower. So yeah. And for the smoke, it's a very, uh, 
I, I made these a while ago, so it's a simple graph that just goes upwards with some envelope and the transparency is also very linear. Makes this nice effect. These are flipbooks by the way, which is why they look so smooth. So just letting you guys know. And for the specs, finally, they start off very linear graph with envelope, totally goes outwards. Then for the transparency, no transparency, because I'm really like using transparency on uh, like bright effects like this. Now in tandem with everything, you get this really nice looking explosion effect. So yeah, I, I hope this video did help you learn the plugins. I will be linking them in the description of the video. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.